Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Monday Minute. Today, I want to go through some more of the details of the 2022 Home Health Proposed Rule. Um, as you can see, the list on the screen um, is very lengthy. Um, the rule itself that was released at the end of June um, with a two-month uh, comment period was 387 pages long and contained tons of changes, as you can see. Um, we are going to do a, a really deep dive um, in the proposed rule webinar that we will have on July 15th. Um, but these are some of the highlights. As you can see, um, the behavioral adjustment is going to remain. Uh, LUPA thresholds um, are going to remain in the range of two to six visits um, to uh, avoid receiving a per visit payment, getting to those LUPA thresholds. Uh, case mix weights um, will all, or, or for the most part, are all we calibrated. Uh, wage indexes have been adjusted, of course, as they always are. For the major changes that happened to the CBSA areas last year, changing some areas from urban to rural, um, we're in a temporary state um, in 2021, uh, but in 2022, that will be final and they will be in their permanent CBSA allocations. Uh, the LUPA add-on um, has not included occupational therapy in the past, uh, but will now include occupational therapy as they are moving uh, to finalize that occupational therapists can do start of care comprehensive assessments when therapy is ordered. Uh, the outlier fixed dollar loss ratio has been dropped significantly from 0.56 to 0.41. Um, in the webinar on the 15th, we will go through the details of how that calculation will pan out. Um, they are updating uh, language in the regulation to now include allowed practitioners versus physicians. Um, now that it has been made permanent, um, that non-physician practitioners may certify and sign orders for home health patients. Um, the value-based purchasing model evidently um, is going to be expanded uh, to a nationwide uh, program uh, starting January 1st of 2022. That will be a webinar of its own that we will um, be adding to our schedule. Multiple quality reporting program changes. Uh, the conditions of participation update include some of the changes um, that were made in the form of COVID-19 waivers. Um, that will now be made permanent. Um, the, the details of that in the July 15th webinar. Infusion therapy updated rates um, were included um, and there have been some adjustments to provider enrollment. Um, as you can see, huge, huge number of changes. Any education that you can be involved in um, with your state associations, the national associations or with us, HPS, um, would do you well um, in preparing for the onslaught of these changes in 2022. Um, some of these changes, I will just tell you, uh, may appear on the surface uh, to be positive um, in the fact that the behavioral adjustment is remaining the same and our rates are technically being increased. Um, but you also have to take into account wage index changes, all the case mix weights being recalibrated, the functional calculation of the PDGM model, significant changes in the point allocations, et cetera. So you'll want to make sure you are looking at the actual impact in the end, not just taking pieces and parts of this and saying uh, we're going to be fine. Thank you all again uh, for participating today. Um, and we will hopefully um, be with you in the webinar on the 15th um, and see you in person this summer and fall um, in your state association conferences. Have a fabulous day.